Well, I, I even I think even Elizabeth Warren, who is head of the uh, Harvard Law Professor, who's head of the Oversight Board, uh, has wondered about the same question. She's never <coughs> raised it specifically, but she's raised all the factors which would lead you to wonder, which is no oversight, no standards, no judicial review, um, and she has repeatedly asked <coughs> for a legal memorandum to justify the takeover of the automobile industry, and none has been <coughs> forthcoming. So. Um, but it's been very hard to find a way to challenge it. The bankruptcy uh, cases went so fast that uh, you couldn't even, it was a blur, you couldn't figure out how to get in if you were an outsider and uh, the, uh, the bond uh, holders in the Chrysler case were ruled uh, not to have standing and then they didn't appeal this to the Supreme Court or seek cert on it. Um, so there it, it just has been no way to get in the court and I shouldn't be talking about this anyway with a judge who might have to rule on it. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. Todd Gaziano, and, and by day I work at the Heritage Foundation, but by, by night I'm on the uh, U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, and uh, we conducted a year-long study of some of the race-based government policies and the likely effect or unlikely effect they may have had on the mortgage crisis, and that's caused me to question um, some of you all's uh, call for a government sponsor, what I, it sounds like a government sponsored blue ribbon commission, and I want to suggest t one, the unlikelihood that the government will actually sponsor such a commission, or two, that it would possibly uh, do more mischief. Um, I, I note my fellow commissioner here, Gail Harriet, she's, she's brilliant and she always get, got it right, but I, in, in, in the study of the, uh, that we did on the Civil Rights Commission, um, we, you know, we understood our own limitation, but that was a very hot button issue, and that's one of the issues that makes me think that uh, it's unlikely that government will want a serious blue ribbon commission to study this. There are other macroeconomic uh, policies that would point fingers at politicians um, that uh, the politicians don't want pointed, and uh, secondly, uh, we at the Federal Society generally don't think that the truth comes from, uh, usually from government-sponsored commissions. So why isn't it better for independent scholars who are doing great work and those of you to study, uh, report, and publish? Dr. McTeer, would you like to try that one? Uh, I tend to agree with you that just let the market for ideas uh, work. When you talk about a commission, when I first started hearing that, it was a commission of uh, senators and congressmen. And <laughs> <laughs> see, that reaction says it all. I don't know. I don't have to finish that sentence. Uh, I just would like to, to suggest that this business of going back and asking, did everything that happened, was it uh, appropriately planned and were various things considered? We've got, to, we've got to remember that most of these things happened in one week. And uh, I guess the, the, the guys making the decision would probably be the first to say, we wish we had had more time to, uh, to establish these things. I mean, I think if they had it to do over, they would have tried a little harder uh, to find a solution uh, uh, to Lehman Brothers, uh, for example. Uh, and they might, might have treated AIG differently. You know, the, the Fed opened the discount window to uh, investment banks, which was a big deal in stopping the panic, but it did so a day after one bank went down that might have survived had it been done a day earlier. But, uh, you know, I sit at home and, and watch a lot of uh, daytime TV, and uh, all, these hearings that the Congress has conducted where they've tried to humiliate the bankers and, and everybody else are uh, very discouraging. So I wouldn't want any of those guys on any commission. Uh, Judge. Uh, uh, Mr. Greenberg, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'd like to yeah. say something on that. Okay. Uh, I think it's essential that we have a commission. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting it be made up of congressmen and senators, but uh, a blue ribbon panel of prominent Americans, I do think it's important. Uh, it's not a question of, uh, at the time of crisis, uh, how individuals behaved, uh, because some of the behavior that's been reported uh, seems to be 
raise more questions than answers. And I do think in our society we're entitled uh, to have those answers so that if there was wrongdoing, uh, we make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, I do think that uh, uh, this problem is not going to go away until these answers are forthcoming. Uh, otherwise, I, I think you leave the public in a very uneasy position. And you leave, uh, you know, why, why would one set of shareholders uh, have been protected uh, versus another that was not? I mean, that's certainly not in keeping with the history of our country. Uh, so I would, uh, well, the Constitution. And is so it, I would urge that we do have a blue ribbon pen. Is, is it more likely the right commission would be formed by the government or a private entity? <coughs> well, the government would, uh, would uh, suggest that there be a commission, and, but, the, but the composition would be made up by, uh, by a blue ribbon group that was, uh, that was appointed uh, by some third party organization, maybe the Federalists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like that. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Greenberg, yeah. um, I'm a little confused. I'll, I'll give you that the government doesn't run things very well, and I'll give you that um, there might be discrimination involved in these bailouts. But I think that isn't the question really why should this money? The taxpayer money be going to prop up these organizations at all uh, or in other words why should the money of the people in this room go to prop up an organization such as AIG which took on risks that other insurance companies would not take on and a company which has been more than implicated in antitrust concerns for example in the Martian McLennan case well uh, I'd like to answer that first of all uh, the people have been tried in the Marsh case if you, if you followed it last week and three of them were found not guilty. Uh, oh and, uh, so I, and the AIG people, or the industry, if you will, insurance industry, uh, um, I believe that was handled in such a, uh, a manner that it really was very distasteful. You take some young junior underwriter, uh, who happened to be an AIG, uh, a, a, a new mother, and was threatened with imprisonment if she didn't tell uh, the prosecutors what they wanted to hear. Uh, I mean, that's not, uh, that was hardly justice. But the fact of the matter is, as this thing goes, winds its way through the court form five years later, they're finding out that what was, what was said to be a horror story didn't turn out to be that way. Uh, and then on, your, on the first part of your question, look, I, I happen to agree that, if, that uh, uh, bankruptcy may have been a better choice for everybody. Uh, but if you're going to use bailout, then let's have some standards in bailout that are not uh, saying, okay, we're going to save uh, A but not B, and we're going to use C to help A and B. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Thank you. It, apparently, there is a group at in the back who also wants to ask questions, and you were invisible to me, so I apologize to you. Um, so let's uh, give them an opportunity also. Uh, thank you. Um, Edward Williamson from Sullivan and Cromwell. A uh, question uh, to, on the um, board, you referred to the European approach of breaking up the banks, and there is a proposal out there that, um, to do something similar in the U.S. Uh, it sounds a great deal like sort of a re return to Glass-Steagall. Um, how would that be done without creating the market uh, problems that Glass-Steagall created and were thought were necessary to be gotten rid of? Okay. I'll take that. Mr. Wallman? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't think the return to Glass-Steagall is the right answer here uh, for two reasons. One is I think it creates all the problems that we had when we had Glass-Steagall. Uh, there were reasons why that act was eliminated as a prohibition between investment banking, commercial banking, et cetera. Uh, and second, in any event, I don't think it solves the problem. Uh, the issue here uh, wasn't the confluence of investment banking and commercial banking. The issue was uh, a rather convoluted one of a variety of entities that were well interconnected, uh, very large, and had significant liquidity issues were one of them to fail. Uh, 